Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life, and this video is to answer a question from JMD about my uh, Even Heat Knife Maker's Kiln. Um, this is the Even Heat 120 volt 18 inch model with the Ramp Master 3 controller. Uh, this one was $1,556. Uh, for $1,731, I could have got the exact same size kiln, 120 volt, but with the tap controller, which is the touch screen and it's Wi Fi enabled. I'd rather save a couple hundred bucks and go with the Ramp Master. Uh, it is a little difficult, not difficult, but not super intuitive to program. So after the quick glance and I show you some of the features of this, then I'm going to get into programming the controller. If you're looking for a video on programming the controller, just skip ahead to, well, I'll put in the description what time frame to skip ahead to, and that's where we'll start. I'm just going to very quickly and concisely go through setting the program. Uh, just looking on YouTube, the, the videos for programming this thing aren't that great, so I'm going to put something very short and sweet, and boom, it'll get you started really quickly uh, after we take a look at it. Like I said, this is 120 volt. I have this plugged into a 20 amp circuit right now, and I can run this as well as other tools, even my belt grinder, uh, and I'm not blowing the circuit. So that's pretty cool. The one thing, it takes a long time to get up to heat. Uh, I'll go up to like 1550 for my O1 blades, and uh, it takes, I actually haven't timed it, but I would say half an hour, 45 minutes to get to that temperature. So uh, that's one of the drawbacks. I'm sure if you got like the 220 volt, uh, uh, size or something like that it would heat up a lot quicker having said that if you're just working in your garage or your small shop and you you don't have a industrial wiring setup it is nice just to buy this thing you can put on a bench top and plug it in and you don't really have to worry about your circuits uh, that you're running it on so I really like that feature about this uh, kiln so 18 inch deep now that 18 inches is right to the edge here so I don't know if you could actually treat an 18 inch blade I think you'd be touching on either end, but a 17 and you'd be fine. Uh, the inside openings are six and a half uh, by four and a quarter. Um, so that's what you can do in there. Uh, I'll show you inside real quick. So there's the inside of it. I bought this uh, ceramic knife holder. I believe it's some type of ceramic or fire material. I bought this separately, uh, just a rack so I can put one, two, three, four blades in there at a time and it just keeps them from touching and it allows even heat all around them. And then there's a look inside, you have your coils in there and then that sticking down is the pyrometer. Um, they've got a, so this is your latch mechanism right here, real simple. And then over here they have a shutoff so that as soon as you open the door, uh, it kills power to those coils which is really nice because uh, you're not going to be reaching in there and grabbing your knife blade, you know, using tongs uh, beside live coil. So, nice little safety feature. I don't believe their original versions had that, um, but these ones do and it works pretty well. Uh, when this thing is heating up, the, I've, the warmest I've ever taken this to is 1550 degrees and you can still touch the top of this. And I'm not saying it's cool to the touch, but it's uh, it's not a fire hazard. You notice I've got it mounted very close proximity to this uh, wooden part of my workbench and I'm not concerned about fires. You could set paper on here when this thing's running and you wouldn't be concerned about it catching on fire. So uh, that's kind of cool. Even the front here you touch it and everything's like nice. Um, I believe with this uh, even heat, I believe you can do, I think you can store 20 different programs and you can have up to 12 different stages for each program. So that's quite a bit. Now when I do my tool steel, my old one, I've kind of upped it a little bit. I'll bring it up to 1200 degrees and soak it there for 15 minutes. And then I'll go up to my 1550 and keep it there for 15 minutes and then I quench it. I'm not sure why, I kind of always change a little bit with it and, and how I do my programming. Um, but Honestly, the, the, if you bring it up to the slower, I've heard that really helps loosen up the grain structure and and then when you go up to the 1500, uh, 1550, uh, where you need it to be, um, it just has a little more, uh, ultimately I don't know, if, in the heat treating process, I don't really know that it hurts uh, O1 tool steel to keep it hot for longer. Uh, shorter is not as good. Uh, you want it to soak into the metal. You want the heat soaked. That's how you need to think about heat treating or the hardening process is uh, is soaking into the metal. Now, I will say the reason I bought this was because I'm starting to make a lot more knives and send them uh, to people. And I'm charging the money that I want to charge for my knives. And 
I know that heat treating a one with a, tor with a torch is adequate, and I know you can get a good heat treat because I've tested it. Um, for five years, I've been using O1 tool steel, and even knives like this, I'll build knives strictly for testing purposes. And this thing, I can chop two by fours. You'll chop five two by fours, and I can still just shave paper and my arm hair. So edge retention is fantastic uh, when you're heat treating. Uh, a knife with a torch and as long as you do it properly you do your research and you know what you're looking for and you have a way to check those things through the process you can get a great heat treat on O1 tool steel with a torch the same with a lot of like uh, 1095 1084 same with a lot of other car high carbon steels some of the basic ones you can do a great job just with a torch however when you get into the larger blades it's harder to keep that even heat across the blade and when you're heat treating if you've done it before you can see that color change where your torch is and for that reason, and the fact that I also want to look into using some other steels, some different stainless steels, things like that that are not quite as easy to treat with just a torch, uh, that's why I went with this. Uh, some of these more exotic steels, you need very precise temperatures, and it'll be take it to this one for a while, hold it there, come back down to here, go up to there. There's a lot of different recipes and formulas, and this will allow me to do all that stuff. So when I buy a steel, I can get the heat treating, the hardening uh, procedures from the manufacturer, which is I suggest you do for all your steel. Um, a lot of people ask me, I have a lawnmower blade, can I heat treat it? Well, yeah, you, you can, but to do it properly, uh, even from batch to batch, it can be a little bit different from the same manufacturer. So the best thing is, is you get your batch number and they will give you a very specific uh, heat treat recipe that is the best shot at getting the perfect heat treat on that particular steel. So I would highly recommend buying one of these if you are getting really busy making knives or if you're making large knives. Having said that, I've never actually used a heat treat service. I've never sent my knives out to be heat treated. I know KnifeMaker.ca has one and I've talked to guys that have used it and they love it. And of course you would, they're, they're a great company. And they charge, I think it's between 15 to $20 for an average blade. I have no clue about price in the US. I'm sure it's probably that or less because everything seems cheaper in the States, but that's always a great option too. I know a lot of really good knife makers that send everything out. I'm more of a hands-on. I like, I like complete control of every aspect of knife making from the time I, I decide the, the idea of the knife to a finished product. Nobody's involved with it except for myself and maybe I'm a control freak, I don't know, but. JMD, I hope that answers any questions you might have had on, there's not a lot of options out there for knife making kilns and these guys have really done a good job at uh, setting themselves up as kind of a standard, uh, good value to feature ratio and uh, really solid product. I'm really happy with them. I still do believe they're quite a small company. I believe these are all kind of hand assembled in a small shop somewhere. I don't know, I've never actually looked into it, but just looking at the way they made some of these things, uh, they're not mass produced, punched out parts. They're still made on like brakes and shears. Let me show you. Say for instance, uh, this little bracket here, you see these got lines on a brake and it's been notched. Uh, they forgot to notch this corner as opposed to this corner. Uh, and even some of these notches are not identical. Um, they're deburred and you know the fit and finish is pretty good it's not solid but I think they're starting to really get into mass producing these and they're doing a fairly good job even the way that their shrouding is screwed on you see there it's just like those hose clamps or gear clamps people will call them and uh, that's they ba they rivet those to their sheet metal I don't know if you can see it right there or not see they rivet those to the sheet metal and then um, just tighten that up. So just little practices like that make me seem to think that they are um, still quite a small company and still kind of setting up their manufacturing processes and stuff like that, which is fine. And I'm actually more prone to support guys like that that are making good quality products, um, but it's not some big huge manufacturing firm from some country that they've got these robots that make this stuff. Uh, you can tell the way it's put together. This was all done by a human being, uh, by hand, uh, using tools like uh, brakes, shears, and stuff like that. All in all, I'm really happy with it. Uh, pretty good little product. And uh, yeah, hope that answers any questions you might have. Now let's get into how to quickly control it. We plugged it in, turn it on, wait. I don't know what that means. Standing by. So it'll just give you standby and the temperature inside the kiln. Right now it's 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you want to make a uh, program for yourself, you'll hit this button here, develop. So develop program. Number one, you give it a name. I've already got three in here, so I'm gonna do number four. And then enter. 
how many segments this next step segments two I'm just gonna have one segment one enter R a one so the ramp speed for the first segment what do I want it to do and this is degrees per hour I could say that I want it only to go up 400 degrees an hour if I want a certain slowness uh, in heating up the material uh, but this is set up for 900, like basically 9999, 9999 degrees per hour. So it's going to heat up as fast as it possibly can. 9999, enter. Degrees Fahrenheit. How hot do I want it to get? Let's just make this one uh, 1650. Enter. How long do I want it to hold 1650 for? It's automatically set to uh, minute seconds, so 8 minutes, 0 seconds. Let's do. 9 minutes 36 seconds enter an alarm do you want an alarm to go off when it gets to a certain temperature i believe to bypass the alarm you go zero 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 enter and complete so now we're done we have entered a program that's going to have one segment it's going to go up to shoot, i don't even remember what we put it at and hold it for that predetermined time and it's going to heat up as fast as it possibly can um, so if you want to bring it back, you can go recall, number four, program four, enter, okay? Now, when we're ready to heat, you hit simply, when we're ready to heat treat, you simply hit the run, enter. And now it's going to heat up. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That alarm is going off when we hit zero degrees, so... <laughs> um, Let's go st stop. Let's develop. Program four, enter. Segments one, enter. Ramp speed, uh, fast as we can, enter. Degrees Fahrenheit, 1650, enter. Hold for 936, enter. Alarm, zero degrees. No, we don't want alarm at zero degrees. We want 9999. So if we reach 9999 degrees Fahrenheit, the alarm will go off. Enter. Complete. Now, we should be able to run, enter, and it should not have an alarm for us. You'll hear a series of clicks, yada, 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 yada. And I'm not exactly sure what it's doing. I mean, that has to do with the way it's been designed. But now we are heating up. We are ramping up to uh, 1650. It's going to go there as fast as it possibly can, and it's going to hold it there for, was it, 9 minutes, 36 seconds, or whatever we decided. And that is really as easy as it is. So if you want your first segment, um, let's try this. Let's do one more. Stop. Okay, so develop. Program number four. Let's change four. So we're going to do number four. Enter. Uh, segments. Let's make it a two segment. Enter. Ramp speed, 900. We want as fast as we can, 999 that, yes. Uh, degrees Fahrenheit, uh, so for one, so that's for segment one, let's just go 1,000. So we want to heat it up to 1,000 degrees, hold it for five minutes, so it's minutes, seconds, enter, and then ramp for number two, so once we go from the 500 to, from the first segment of heat to our second segment, how hot do we want to go? Let's say we only want that one to increase by 500 degrees an hour, enter, degrees Fahrenheit, so how high do we want to go? Uh, 960 sure let's do that boom and hold for 40 seconds no let's hold that for uh, 12 minutes and yeah, 12 minutes zero zero 12 minutes zero seconds enter alarm no enter unless you want alarm now we're complete now we have a two-stage program set up with the first one taking us to 500 degrees as fast as it can holds it there for uh, whatever we determined it to be five minutes and then from there uh, it will go up at 500 degrees per hour until it reaches 960 degrees and holds it there for uh, the amount that we had uh, programmed it to so that is really as easy as it is to program this thing very simple to use and you can certainly use the alarm if you want and it's probably a good idea uh, to silence the alarm all you do is hit the alarm button a few times and then you go back to view which will be uh, it will totally just uh, bring you back to watching the program. Also, uh, while you're using it, you can simply hit add time and it'll actually extend it a bit or you can add a temperature and it'll extend it a little bit while you're using it live. 
those are the very basic, basic features of the kiln, and uh, so far it's more than what I need to use. Even a two-segment heat is you don't need to do for an one-tool steel, but I read somewhere that it's better to do. You know, I've been doing a lot more research on steels lately, and I've come up with the fact that it's it's all right to it's better to actually have a warm-up stage and then your final heat stage. So that's what I'm doing. Does it really make a huge difference? I'm not sure, uh, but I'm just trying to make the very best possible uh, uh, finish of a knife and have the very best edge retention and hard uh, hardening as I possibly can. So that's really as simple as this thing is. You can put up to 12 segments for a knife, which is a lot. So you can actually do a certain, bring it up to a certain critical temperature and then cool it down to temperature, hold it there, cool it down to temperature, hold it there, whatever you want. You can set this thing up for, I'm not sure what the lowest temperature will go is, but you can set it up for your 450 degrees for your tempering cycles. Uh, bring it up there and then you know shut it off. There's pretty much some of the basic features, basic functions, and how to program the even heat 12 inch with the Ramp Master 3 controller. If you have any questions about this, uh, please just leave them in the comments below and I'll do whatever I can to answer them. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.